All right, man, we back. Mercy Sports Talk. We're in the building, knocking videos out. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist for more videos like this. Lions one on one live stream. I'm probably going to do that um, today or tomorrow. Latest Monday. So let's talk about the Lions. Uh, one of my subs once again told me to check out the Corey L uh, Udeland interview. He is the new Detroit Lions defensive coordinator. He talked to the press virtually. I'll put that link in the description. It's on Detroit Lions YouTube channel if I forget to do so. And he was asked some things, and uh, he was asked what he called plays. He also was asked what about, you know, the style that he's bringing and how the virtual OTAs been, or virtual meetings been going on Zoom. And he talked good about Jeff Okuda. He said Okuda was, you know, like he just off football. You know what I'm saying? He said, you know, the city of Detroit and the Lions fans are going to love Okuda. And I and basically, he a football head. You know what I'm saying? And he's been shining in team meetings. So that's what he said about Okuda. But I know you guys want to hear the good stuff. He talked about, you know, uh, what he going to bring from Philly. He said he going to bring some things from Philly uh, to Detroit. And Philly like the blitz. They like to be aggressive in their front seven. And in Philly, they had to be aggressive. Remember, he worked with um, former Detroit Lions head coach Jim Shorts. And Jim Shorts in Detroit, you know, if people remember, he wasn't aggressive as far as blitz. And they believed that they wanted to get there with four down linemen. The same as Rod Mar Marinelli. He didn't believe in blitzing really neither. They like to build a good front four, and then they like to get to the quarterback from there. And so, with Cordy Udlin in, in, in Philly, they kind of went a little bit of a different route with Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz, they've been using – they use a little bit more pressure. And, it may, and with Philly, it's that mystique of Jim Johnson who loved to bring blitzes and exotic pressure. So, um, Jim Schwartz kind of evolved leaving Detroit and going to Philly, but you have to because Philly don't have a great back end. So, they strength is Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox um, – I think they have Malik Jackson now, and you know they had, you know, their strength was up front, so they had to bring pressure, you know, because they back end couldn't cover long enough. So Udlin said he got to bring some things over for Philly and going to combine some things with Matt Patricia. Um, so you know, I look forward to that. He said the linebacker group is going to be fun to watch. He said, you know, basically with Jamie Collins, Tavai, and Christian Jones, and Reggie Ragland, and uh, Julian Okora. So he said those guys are going to be fun to watch and. He said it's been going as, as well as possible uh, during the Zoom thing. He said he has some issues trying to model the stuff up and going, you know, over the whiteboard with the guys. But he fixed the issues and seemed like he expected to have a really strong unit. He talked about some of the guys they brought in as well too, um, Nick Williams, and I think I think he spoke on Danny Shelton and said that they fit, you know, what they need to do. You know what I'm saying? Everything that they did, they feel that they they brought everybody who they brought in filled the need um, for the football team. So. It seemed like him and Patricia have been working well together on, you know, game plans and on, you know, implement what he brought in Philly here and mixing in with Patricia. Um, you know, as far as they didn't evaluate the personnel, they see who they need to bring in. Nick Williams is a big run stopper. They brought Danny Sheldon in, a run stopper. They brought Kuro in, a guy that can get it off the edge. They get Deshaun Hand back. They get Trey Flowers back this year. He had a little bit of shoulder injury coming in the season. He came on hot last year. So, you know, it seemed like they're very, very confident and uh, what he's doing, but he also was asked, you know, who going to call the plays. He said, we'll see when the regular season get here. So that might bother some people as well. I'm telling people, people talked about Pascaloni. He wasn't the mastermind. Pascaloni was a, was a fall guy and they paid Pascaloni in full. They still paying him what he owed. I guarantee you that he was Matt Patricia homeboy. Um, so they're going to take care of him, but obviously you not calling the plays. If you was calling the plays, he would have said, Oh, I'm, I'll be calling the plays this season. Matt Patricia, it's the one calling the plays and been calling the plays. So at the end of the day, you know, it may be Udlin and Matt Patricia putting the defensive game plan together, but ultimately it's going to be up to Matt Patricia to utilize what, excuse me, what, you know, Udlin is bringing to the table. If Udlin want to blitz more, it's going to be up to Matt Patricia. If he want to go wide nine, it's going to be up to Matt Patricia. He want to play more 4-3, which I think that's what they play in Philly, it's going to be up to Matt Patricia. Okay? He bringing a 4-3 scheme, so... With Udlin coming with a 4-3 scheme, does it mean they're going to do more 4-3 things? That's the question because if they do more 4-3 things, it'll be interesting because you're going to have Sheldon as a run stopper and then, you know, have Dan Deshaun Hand playing the three technique. Then you're going to have Flowers on the outside. And whoever played that in, it could be Okora. He can put his head in the dirt. So it should be interesting because he bought in a 4-3 guy. I don't know what Udlin history is outside of Philly. But Jim Schwartz ran a, a similar defense here, 4-3. He just blitzed more in Philadelphia. So 
you know, is he going to bring them blitz packages in? He going to bring something different to the table or he just there for a position? That's the question. He can put a game plan together all he want to, but Matt Patricia going to do what Matt Patricia want to do. So is Matt Patricia going to be able to break the mold and say, you know what? I'm not a rocket. Rocket science don't matter in football. You know, I need help on manufacturing more pressure. You know, because Jim Source like to mix it up. He plays some man. He plays some zone. He like to mix it up. You know what I'm saying? I remember Darius Slay was a rookie, and he was struggling with zone coverage, and that's why, you know, he didn't initially start, and eventually he got better at zone. So, you know, it should be very, very interesting to see what Ulan brings to the table. And what what not what he brings to the table. We know what he brings. He brings a championship pedigree. I don't know if he was on there with the championship Eagles, but they got championship pedigree. Um they they bring some pressure. They always have strong front sevens. Um, they blitz you. They physical up front in Philly. Um, they linebackers can run. Um, you know Fletcher Cox is one of the best defensive tackles in the league. Brandon Graham from Detroit. We know what he bringing out of the University of Michigan off the edge. You know so, like I said before, Philly is tough up front. The strength of Philly Philly uh, defense is the front seven. That's the strength. So it'll be interesting if Patricia allowed Ulan to really implement that style or he adopts some of them things out that style. But right now, I don't feel confident in him saying that when the regular season comes, we'll see. Um, Ulan ain't going to be called in the players. I'll tell you that right now. I might have been wrong with the Pistons and Ed Stefanowski on not letting him, Troy Reaver, do his job. I was wrong. But Ulan ain't going to be calling them plays. Patricia going to be calling them plays. And once again, it boil down, can you teach an old dog new tricks? That's the question. Is Patricia going to be more... Is he going to bring pressure is the question. You know, so it'll be interesting to see pretty much how much power Udalin got. I think he's going to have the same amount of power Paul Pascaloni got. And a lot of you guys was killing Paul Pascaloni for being the issue with the Detroit Lions uh, defense. And even I think Mike Lombardi came on to 97 on the ticket one time uh, last year and said this is this was the issue with Patricia in New England that he – he was just too finesse. He was too being, uh, being on break. He wasn't aggressive enough uh, in New England. And now you see New England after they lost Patricia, they became more aggressive and blitz and being more of some, you know, go getters up front. So, you know, that is what it is with that. But if he can implement more things from Philadelphia, I think the Lions may be going more to a four down line and three linebacker set. But you know, and that's confusing too. You know what I'm saying? When, you know, some days you run a 3-4, some weeks you run a 4-3, that's confusing, man, because um, not only to the to the to opposition, but that's confusing to a lot of players. A lot of young players still trying to get their feet wet. Like Okura, sometimes he might stand up, sometimes he might drop. Like, for a really, really successful player to come in, he needs to be able to master something once. And that's why tight end is so hard to come in and hit the ground rolling with, with your tight end. Tight ends are hard... Mason want to play. Tight ends are hard to play with because are hard to adjust to because they got to learn a blocking scheme. They got to learn a they got to learn an extra spot. They got to learn a slot. They got to learn some things in the backfield. So you know he you can't master one thing as a tight end to be good. Then you can't be a full time tight end. You gonna be a situational tight end, and that's the same thing. Okura if they you know kind of playing multiple defense, same thing he got to worry about because sometimes Devin Kennard was a veteran. Sometimes he dropped, sometimes he rushed, sometimes he went to the flat, sometimes he dropped in zone, sometimes he plays a man uh, underneath. So it's a tough position. So it's hard, you know, in the front seven for the, for, for the, for the Lions. And that's probably why they went with a lot of veterans in the front seven because they've been around the block and they, they, can, they can do some things and they can handle much more than the rookie. So that's probably why you, you didn't see them attack a lot with a lot of rookies in the middle linebacker position. You know, that takes a couple of years to get your feet wet in. That's the quarterback of the defense. So don't be surprised if you see more Davis or Raglan than Tavai at that position. They might play uh they might play Tavai at the outside this year, but hey, we'll see how they play. But um I think the Lions could be headed a little bit more for four three. I'm gonna cook on this hopefully today or later tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna do pistons today or not. But uh, I'm going to get to some Lions this weekend or by Monday. So I do appreciate everybody for checking in. And don't forget to check out the channel out for more sports, music, news, and entertainment. That's at Goodfellas Sports TV right here on YouTube. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description. Want to make a donation to the channel, cash out, PayPal, description. So you want to reach out to me. Twitter is the fastest way. Then Facebook and IG. 
I'm really on there. But the best way you can donate is share, share the video. Let me know what you guys think about what Usman said. And I'll put the interview in the description on the source link one time for the one time we done.